Good evening. This is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it always. It. We are thankful to be back with, with more great news about true fathers and sons. And my husband is going to read now concerning the true fathers and sons in the book of Hebrews. Amen. Amen. So can you just pray before you read? It's so important. Father, this. we just thank you this evening as we come before you. We commit this time, Father God, in your word yes. and in your presence, Father, thank you. to you that you will bless it. Bless the hearers and bless the viewers, Father God, that they will be encouraged by the word that goes out, Father. Lord, and that they will call unto you who is our Father, who is our healer, who is our deliverer, oh, yeah. who is our redeemer. And we thank you, Father thank God, you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Thank Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 11. By faith Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to come a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. Yes. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. Mm -hmm. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob, and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. When we read this passage, we read about people who have lived by faith, although the word declares that the things they have believed in, they didn't receive it. But it doesn't mean that everything that you believe in, you will receive. Because sometimes God makes a promise that is not for you alone, but for your descendants. That is why uh, Abraham is called the father of faith. Because God says through his seed, he, the, the earth will be blessed. And he will have offspring as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. And it came to pass when he, when he, uh, when he fathered Isaac, and God wanted him to sacrifice Isaac to see and to test his obedience. And so before he could kill and sacrifice Isaac, God provided a lamb, a ram in the bush. In the same way, God provided a lamb for our salvation. But this passage re reflects to Abraham, who is our father of faith. And so when we walk in faith, we say that we are children of Abraham. We are inheritors of, uh, inheritors of Abraham because we walk in the footsteps of our father, our earthly father who was Abraham. But our heavenly father is our father, the, the, the king of kings, the father, the God, the creator of the heavens, of, of, the, uh, of the creator of heavens and earth in whom we have our in whom we have our hope and our trust that what he has promised, as he has promised in the life of Abraham to come to pass, it will come to pass in our lives as well. I'm going to read from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5. 
and you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. And your hardship as discipline, God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather yield. You see, this passage speaks about two types of disciplines. Mm. The discipline of our earthly father and the discipline yes. of our heavenly father. You know, sometimes your uh, our, heavenly, uh, our earthly fathers disciplined us, but it didn't prevent us of doing wrong again, or it didn't make us see the light, as they say. They disciplined us the way they fe felt good. And sometimes, because they disciplined us in a way that they felt good, it wasn't effective because he didn't deal with the problem, but or the, or the roots of the problem. But when God, our Father, disciplines us, He disciplines us for our own good, because mm -hmm. He knows what's the root of our problem, so He disciplines us. The Word of God says here, even that we are trained by discipline. Yes. We become obedient when our Father, our mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, who is a Father of all fathers, discipline us. It is for our righteousness, it is for our uh, um, redemption, it is, all, it is for our good, and it is for our eternal benefit. Yes. And so we, we are thankful for our earthly fathers that, that disciplined us, but we know with hindsight what, what we know now, once we have become children of our Heavenly Father, how much better it is to listen to His discipline, because mm -hmm. we know he disciplined us in love. Our fathers sometimes disciplined us in anger or in what they believe is right or wrong. But we know that our Heavenly Father always disciplined us in the righteous things. Amen. And I want to say that anger is not an ungodly anger. It's a, a loving uh, father anger. And, uh, um, you know, I won't say uh, anger. I would rather say the fathers feel upset. Because you yes. also a father when you were mm. disciplining our children and that. And I stood with you as a mother. And uh, we must stand together as parents that cares. Because our Heavenly Father cares about us daily. Then I want to turn over to Proverbs. Proverbs 3 verse 11 and 12 reads as such. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent His rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those He loves, as a father, the son He delights in. Yeah, that was which verses was that you say that you read? Proverbs 3 verse 11 and 12. All right, and now I'm going to read from verse 1. It says here, my son, do not forget my law. It says here, but let your heart keep my commands. So that's why we know that Jesus came to fulfill the law of all the law of Moses. And all the Old Testament uh, Bible uh, uh, prophecies, I want to say, what has been prophesied and that. So uh, this discipline that the Bible speaks in the book of Proverbs is uh, talking about that, uh, you know, it's, it's, got a, it's got a promise with it. Because God is a promise keeper. It says here, for length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. In other words, Amen. they will enjoy long life. Amen. Can you read it there in, in, in this translation? It says here in verse 1, My son, do not forget my teaching, mm. 
Amen. But keep my commands in your heart, yes. for they will prolong your life many years Amen. and bring you prosperity. So we read from two different uh, uh, translations. And it says here in verse 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Amen. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from all evil. You know, if you're a true son of God and evil wants to come close to you, they won't. Evil cannot come close to you. Only when you open up a door to evil. And there's many doors when you can, uh, how you can open it up. But mm. I want to say, don't open up doors. Yes. Listen don't. to the discipline of your Amen. parents, of your father yes. and of your mother, especially from the teaching of the word of God. Amen. And listen what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you Thank when you Jesus. read the word of God yes, with Lord. us tonight. And we want to encourage those, especially the young men. That and the young woman today, you the young adults, and we already grandparents and we, uh, of of little boys and that, and uh, we want to say that uh, please don't uh, uh, give in to influences of your friends. They can mm. take you away from the truth. Yes, you know when they not knowing the truth and the way and the everlasting life. They don't know uh, Christ Jesus as a personal savior. You know then I will say rather win them over but don't let them win you over to their side mm. you know the unbelievers i'm talking about win them over to to know our, our father through our son through his son jesus christ and uh, become a true son and a true daughter of our lord jesus christ yes lord i want to say that to you to you tonight honor the lord with your positions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I want to say this is uh, the very same one that Deuteronomium uh, uh, 28, chapter 28 says from verse 1 to 14 about the blessings of the Lord that shall follow you all the days of your life concerning, you know, uh, uh, sowing into the God's kingdom. This is talking about sowing in the kingdom of God. It says, honor the Lord with your positions. Because all our, uh, uh, our monies, all our money that we earn monthly, and uh, our ministry that we have, and that all belongs to the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank all belongs Jesus. to Him. He has given it to us. He entrusted us with this uh, ministry of, of ours. And my husband is doing a, a, a business of editing uh, work for others. And he's doing it with, uh, you know, with love for others. And they see the love of God. They see the compassion of God in his heart. And he teach other youngsters as well. And they see, you know, in uh, editing and in uh, producing the the uh, uh, editing side of the of the camera of, of the what do you call this in the recording sorry the recordings that we're doing tonight he's doing it all and he has taught many uh, youngsters and i want to say uh, to the to the young out there we always encourage the youngsters that come here with the in the word of god that uh, uh, honor the lord with your first fruits of yes. increase so that your barns will be full Thank of plenty you, as it says in Deuteronomy, you, you will never your barns will never be in uh, you know if you sow into god's kingdom if you uh, uh, give into god's kingdom sowing and giving this is now something totally different what we were uh, talking about you and then he says my son do not despise the chastening of your lord nor detest his correction for whom the lord loves he corrects just as a father the son yes in whom he delights. Happy is a man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Amen. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver mm. and again are then, then more than fine gold. Yes. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in the right hand, in her left hand, riches and honor ways our our ways of pleasantness and mm. all the paths of peace. You see that the, the, the peace of God shall follow you all the days. I shall mm. be with you, sorry, not follow you, be with you all the days of your life. Yes. And the blessings of yes. God also. 
you see the blessings the blessings of god is very important amen and, uh, the our sons and daughters are spiritual and our very own they are our spiritual blessings from the lord and we always encourage them in the word and we want to encourage like i said especially the 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 young adults and even the elders uh, they you know that uh, 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 encourage your children the elders are that is grandparents and that tonight we want to say encourage your children encourage them in the word of god in, yes. and uh, 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 chastise them when it's necessary for it yeah and uh, discipline them where it's necessary as my husband has read the word now the lord by wisdom founded the earth he says here by understanding he established the heavens by knowledge the depths were broke were broken up as i read uh, in my first session and the clouds dropped down the dew that god is a creator of all things on earth amen he created the heavens and the yes. earth and the thank first, you jesus you know he created the, the the plants and everything and all this what what uh, the book of proverbs talk about my son he says let the word of god not depart from your eyes keep sound wisdom and discretion i want my husband to read it from uh, uh, again uh, 21 my son preserve sound judgment and discernment do not let them out of your sight they will be life for you an ornament to grace your neck then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it tomorrow when you now have it with you. Do not pl plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways. For the Lord detests a perverse man but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. Amen. Uh, can you just explain what you have read there, you know, the verses that stand out? Yes, what, what, what this passage of scripture just emphasizes is that when we live according to God's law, God's ways and God's will and His righteousness, then we have got nothing to fear of about any wrong or about any curse. It says even here that that uh, the house of the of the righteous cannot be cursed mm. because God has blessed it already. Amen. And he says the wise will inherit honor. You see, when we we depend on the wisdom of God and not on our own wisdom and not on our own understanding, then we will be very careful how we treat people, how we treat circumstances. Mm -hmm and have the right answer and do the right thing. It is always people that do the wrong things, who are hasty and do the wrong things or illegal things that get into trouble. But when we live according to the law of the Lord, not the law like the Ten Commandments only and the laws in the Old Testament, but the laws that God gives us to live in love, to live in righteousness, to live in holiness, because the word of God teaches us that they, against these things there is no law. Nobody can harm you if you want to live holy or righteous or in the ways of God. So we see it's always better to listen to our Heavenly Father, to listen to what He instructs us to do, to listen to His precepts, because it's, it's our safeguards, it's our, it's our hiding place. We can hide in the, in the ways of God and it will always protect us. Amen. Hallelujah. And now we want to end off with the last verse of scripture that talks about the blessings of the Lord in uh, from Deuteronomy 28. Now it shall come to pass if you diligent, uh, diligently obey the voice of the Lord God, your God. 
the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you it says here wonderful because you obey the voice of the Lord your God it is so important to do it myself and my husband has decided to follow the voice of God to hear what his spirit is saying and we know that his blessings are following us today and it says here number uh, verse 3 blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country blessed shall be the fruit of your body that is your the, the, the temple of God our body the physical body is belongs to God <laughs> amen the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks amen so blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl I always need some flour to make some bread I love to make bread for our home and uh, my husband loves baked bread amen Amen. So enjoy the baked bread. So it says here, your basket and your kneading bowl, it shall be full. And uh, blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. You see, wherever you go, the blessings of the Lord shall follow you Amen. all the days of your life. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways when he tried to come in one way the lord says here in this word verse uh, seven that you will flee seven ways that is an enemy that is a that is a satan's demons that he sent out and that uh, to try to harass or torment you or whatever don't allow him to because the word of god say when the blessings of the lord and when he's because his protection is always upon us no harm will befall us or our children or our children children because of the blessings and the protection of the Lord, but especially the banner. The Lord God is our banner. He is our protection, as it, as it says in the word of God. And it says here, the Lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses and in all uh, to which you set your hand on. Amen. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. Amen. You see, I like the first part when it says he command blessings on you. In your storehouses your storehouses can be the, the your business if you if you have a business like my husband and i uh, 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 doing the business of the lord first is his business <laughs> hallelujah and then uh, my husband uh, yelp others and uh, 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 do other uh, do the work of uh, pro producing um, and uh, recording the recording that he must still go edit and that so it is important to know that god is alive he never slumbers no he's asleep Amen. and he's watchful of his over his children and his blessings shall follow us all the days of our life and uh, uh, he say you will give it says here and he will bless you in the land which the lord your god is giving you don't try to think that this is a land of of uh, uh, where people are fighting now, even the, the Koi uh, people that we know, they're fighting for, for the land that, uh, are, because they're the first nation of South Africa, and that, so they are fighting for certain land that belongs to them. We, I want to say that we've got an eternal inheritance in Christ. So that is more important than these temporal things. The land here in the country is all temporal. I just want to mention that. I just feel that the Lord wants want me to mention that. The Lord says here, the land, every land that he created is God is the creation of it. And every land, and especially Israel, belongs to God. I'm talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Jacob was, was named Israel. And that is why Israel is up till today Israel. And I want to say, uh, even here, the South Africans, that, that this land is not the land of the people of the Koi or the, 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 the whoever uh, uh, tribe and that. It belongs to God first. Amen. Amen. The land belongs to God because God is a creator of each and every country, of each and every land, of each and every uh, uh, home as well. When you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. then he's the number one of your life and of your home. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to say that uh, we are glad that we, we know and serve a great God, an awesome God. We are blessed because of whom we know and serve a blessed Savior. A blessed God, hallelujah. Amen. That is uh, um, the God of now and for eternity, hallelujah. And uh, I want to read further. The Lord will establish you 
as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name, by the name of the Lord Jesus, and they shall be afraid of you. Why? Because of the glory of the Lord that is upon us, because of the anointing power of the Lord Jesus Christ that's upon us, upon his spirit that's upon us. Because when Jesus uh, quotes scriptures the first time when he read this uh, in the synagogue, the word of God, he said uh, that he's anointed and appointed by God. You know, and they couldn't understand it. And he's Amen. anointed one. Yes. Because Christ means the anointed one. Amen. And I want to say that we serve the anointed King of Kings and Lord of all and the true soon coming Messiah. And we are glad that we know the true coming Messiah. Amen. And we obey him. We listen what his spirit is saying to us daily. And we want you to become also, you know, like uh, uh, true sons and daughters of God. And uh, you must know that that uh, if you are a true son and a daughter of God, he, he is the one that will lead and guide you in all truth. Hallelujah. And we are thankful tonight that we can bring you this word out. The word of the blessings of, his, of, of obedience in him and also of our becoming true sons and daughters in him. And then it says here, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body and in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasures from heaven. It says here, from heaven, open heavens in other words, to give the rain to your land in a season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. That is a promise that God made. You see, my husband and I are blessed because we sow into the kingdom of God. Because we are givers at all times. We're giving in prayer. We're giving, I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about sowing and giving. Giving in prayer, giving in uh, uh, the, all our possessions that we have belongs to God first. Everything, every cent that we have in the bank belongs to God. Everything, the, the possession of our house, of our cars, Amen. and that belongs to God. Thank it's you, blessings Jesus. from Him. We were blessed with it. And uh, we were favored with God from it. And God says, and even our ground are blessed. Even the house that we have are blessed and all that. And we thank God for it. So it says here that we live under open heavens and favor of God. The blessings Amen. and the favor of God shall thank follow you, us. Shall follow you. You know, and it says here, we shall lend to the to many nations, which we have done. We have lent to many nations. We have lent to many people. And uh, But you shall not borrow. We will always give. We will always give because our Father is a giver of life. Hallelujah. He's a giver of everything. He has given us more than enough. I'm not talking about earthly possessions here. I'm talking about spiritual life. He has given us life and life in abundance. Hallelujah. Amen. To enjoy on earth. And what, for me, what is more important for me is that God says here, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be for, uh, uh, above only and not be beneath. And uh, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from, from any of the words which I command you this day, says the Lord, to the right or to the left, to go after you should not go any after any other gods or to serve them because Amen. that is idols that is dead gods that is god that cannot answer you back we serve a god that answer us yes we serve a god that knows us and that answer us whenever whatever we ask he answers and he he, he gives us he never uh, we are, we're serving a, a giving god Yes, gave his only begotten son that you that, that's a listener tonight shall not perish but have eternal life that Thank we you, have. Jesus. We have eternal life already and that is a, a gift from God, a free gift. Yes, The Amen. word of God is free. So go read it and be established in him and his living word. Know the true father of your life. He is the way, Jesus is the way, the truth and the everlasting life to the true father. Our Father God that is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And with that, Thank we are Jesus. done tonight. And we will come back with more great news of God's blessings, of God's uh, everlasting blessings, 
of his truthfulness, of his faithfulness, hallelujah. And we are so glad that we have, have, have shared with you about the, the, the true fathers and son that my, my you, husband Jesus. is. And I'm going to ask him just to pray to the, for the nations tonight and uh, then we say goodbye to you. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless you. Yes, Lord. We honor you as we can Hallelujah. bring the nations before you. Yes, Father God. Father, we know that you love the nations, Father. Yes. You said, Father, that you uh, you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son, Father, to die for those who will call upon your name, Father God. Lord, you desire that nations must come to you. Yes, you desire, Lord. Father, that every knee shall bow before you. You desire that there will be a people from every tongue and every culture and every tribe, Father God, to stand before your throne and give you praise and glory. And so we, Father, and we so we ask, Father, tonight that those who hear your word will respond, Father, to your yes. invitation to come to you tonight to make you the Savior, the Redeemer, the everlasting Father. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh.